Hi, and welcome to Crest by Two. I'm George. And I'm Ken. Today we're introducing the first in a series of cards. George made this really cool design with needlepoint for kind of a wreath, and we're going to make it into a whole series of cards. So each month we'll have a different type of wreath card. So why don't you jump right in, George, and show them what to do. I'd be happy to, Ken. So here's everything that we need to put together for our Mother's Day easel wreath card. So just to take some notes, this is the back of the card, and this is the backing to the salutation. They're cut out of vellum. I thought it would give the card a nice look. Our salutation, Happy Mother's Day, is a very fine and delicate salutation. And a lot of times when you cut those out of paper, it rips or doesn't cut all the way. One way to get around that is to use vinyl. So this is glitter vinyl. That's what I used. Um, I've already print and cut the flowers and the leaves and then edge them with Copic markers in pink, yellow, and green appropriately. And this is Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. I believe it's number 10. That's what we'll be using to create the wreath. So let's jump ahead and get right into putting the wreath together. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to get ready to do your easel card is to create your wreath. So I've already threaded my needle with some of the Aunt Lydia's crochet thread and I'm going to take one of the circles that have the many holes in it and go through the bottom of the circle. And I'm going to pull it all the way through. So I turned it upside down. I'm going to pull it all the way through just so I have a little tail left over. And then I'm just going to take some scotch tape. And tape the tail. down without really trying to go over any of the other holes okay so then i'm going to use my hole counter guide and put it right over the top of the hole whoops that i went through and then that's going to show me where i go through the next hole right over here okay so before you do that, though, you're going to want to get your other circles behind. Or actually, let's wait. Because I think it will be easier if we do this first. And it has holes cut in it, so you can just pop it out and set it over to the side because you won't need it anymore. And that's our first stitch. So now we're going to want to put these others on the back to give our wreath some thickness because when you're doing the needlework on the cardstock, the cardstock isn't super thick and it'll tend to bend. So we're just going to pick any hole on here and go through. So we're going to layer our cardstock to make it thicker. And we're going to put any hole and go through here. And I'm going to use four because I think that gives it a nice full thickness. It won't bend when I'm doing the needlework on it. There. And then all your holes will line up. So the next thing we're going to do is the hole that we just came through, we're going to go one up. And you're going to go through all four card stacks like this. And then you're going to go back to where you started from and go in the next hole. Like that. Now, as you do this, you don't want to cut a huge piece of thread because it'll end up getting tangled. So I don't have a really, really long piece, but I have a long enough for me that I know I can work with this well. So then flip it over. You go under the next hole over. Like that. And then you're going to take this and go to the next hole above. And you're going to keep doing that. So flip it over. You're going to go in the next hole, which is the one above the one you just went in. And then you're going to go back and go into the hole after the one you just came out of. And you're going to continue doing that. So flip over, 
And if you notice on the back, it kind of makes, oops, it kind of makes a pattern. So see, it does a stitch, then a skip, then a stitch. So you could bring this up to the one above the last one you went into. Oops. And go like that. And then come up from the bottom, up one. And down through the one after the one you just came out of. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around the card. And by doing it this way, you're not wasting any of the yarn by going behind the card. Everything that you're doing, the most of your yarn will be on the front. I keep saying yarn, but it's crochet thread. But to me, it's the same thing. And as you can see, I'm coming towards the end of my yarn. So I'm going to keep using this string of yarn as long as I can. weaving it back and forth, not changing anything that we did. So I'm going to come up out of this hole and I can barely make it to that hole. So you can do one of two things. I like to do this. I'll take another piece of crochet thread. I will make a slip knot in the end of it. I will put the slip knot over this. The last piece of string that I came out with. And then I will pull tight. And then I will take this and get it as close to the card as you can. Then I'll take this and just tie it in, oops, tie it in a double knot with the two ends, the end from the slip knot and the end from the piece that you pulled through the card, tie it in a knot, oops, I don't have my crafting scissors here, so I have to use these and I will cut the tails long or short so they're not long and I will thread the other end of the needle there we go and then I'm just going to continue I'm going to go into the next hole just like we had one continuous piece of thread and if you can see on the back, there's my knot. It won't really make a difference in the end result of the card. So you're going to keep going around the card like that. Okay, so now we've come to a part that some people find a little bit confusing or a little bit tricky. So I wanted to make sure I went over it with you. So we're coming to the last open hole before we go into the holes that we started to go into at the very beginning. So I'm going to go into the last hole. And you're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. So you're going to come up out of the next hole. And then across, just like we've been doing. So when you're all done with this wreath area, you will have two pieces of thread coming into or out of each hole, making a V. So if you can see this, it kind of looks like a little V. So I'm going to come up through this hole over here and then go down through the next hole and not get snagged around my card. And that makes two pieces of thread through that hole and through that hole. I hope you can see that. So I'm just going to continue the rest of the way around. Now we're at the point that we're going to come into the last open hole on the wreath. So we're going to come up and 
And we're going to go across and go into the first hole that doesn't have two threads in it. Like that. So remember, every hole has to have two threads. So we're going to continue around the wreath all the way over to this point because this is a point that we started to have two threads coming through so you have to continue all the way around and then at the end every hole will have two threads coming through so we're just going to continue doing that so we're getting to the end of our wreath i have two more stitches to go come up through that one down through over here. I'm going to come up through my last single stitch hole and down through the other one over here. There you go. Now every stitch or hole on my wreath has two pieces of thread going into it or out of it. So now I'm just going to flip this over. This is what the back of your wreath should look like. There's a continuous stitch going all the way around, except for this last stitch. And what you can do if you want to, is you can thread under here, and then put it through the hole again to create a knot in it so it holds it tight. That's what I do. And then I cut it off with a little bit of a tail. I can set the thread in my needle over to the side. And then I get our trusty scotch tape out. And I pull the tail over to the side. And just tape it down. And cut off any excess that I don't need. And there is the wreath. It's done. So now let's put the rest of the card together. You won't need this any longer, but you might want to hang on to it in case you decide to do other wreath cards with us. Uh, we will have a series of these cards coming out, hopefully one every month for different occasions and different types of cards. So this is a 32, so you know that it skips 32 holes between this notch and this notch. So... What we're going to do is, this is scored in the center, so let's fold it down. And then this is scored in the center. We're going to fold this back. Like that. Hard to see in this light, too. There we go. I'm going to fold it back. Because I didn't bring my bone folder, I'm going to use the edge of the scissors. There. And then we're going to use the backing. This is the piece of vellum that I had. We're going to put the backing on. That way you can't quite see through the center. So we've created the card. Let's put the backing on. So to glue the vellum onto the back of the wreath, we're going to use some of the Queen and Company Sheer Glue. This is some incredible glue that Queen and Company sells that they use for their three-dimensional cards to stick the acetate onto Oops. Onto their cards. You don't need a lot. I put a lot around the outside because there's the there's the the um I wanted to call it embroidery thread, the crochet thread. So I'm just going to spread it out with the tip a little bit. 
and set that to the side. And I'm going to take this and just line it up, and push it down so it adheres to the back. And this glue, I think the best way I can describe this glue is kind of like um, rubber cement. It doesn't completely dry 100%, so it has movement to it a little bit. And this card will definitely have a little bit of movement. And there is a piece of thread that popped out the side. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm just going to push it back in to some of the glue and then put this down. There we go. There. Now we have the backing of the wreath done. So what we can do next is we can put this down, flatten this out a little bit, put this down. This is where you can write your greeting or your note to mom. And we're just going to use some art glitter glue on the back of this. Put some around. Don't have to use a lot. And then we're going to set it right about center. There we go. Oop. And I slid it there. That looks good. And then we are going to glue the wreath to the top portion of our fold. So you want to fold it. Put glue around it. And then you're going to line up the back of your card and the wreath. So they should cover each other like that. So there, your card will end up standing up like that when we're done. So we have the stand. So on the one side of the stand, I wrote the year. Um, on the other side is blank. I think I'm going to do the blank. You can write anything you want on it. And I thought I wanted the year because I know like Ken's mom saves us all the cards that we give her. But I think I am just going to, hmm. You know, I kind of like the year, I think. All right, I'm going to do the year. I'm going to put the year down. And that makes our little stand. And now all I need for the stand is some foam dots. Everybody has foam dots. We have the two sizes in this pack. I think I'm going to use the smaller ones. And use a bunch of them to hold it up. That backing came off already. with that I think because my fingers are a little sticky from the Queen and Company glue some great glue I do. That one's done. That one's done. And that one's done. And now we're going to kind of open the card up. And I'm going to want to set this, I think, right about. And that way, your easel card 
will stand up and lean against it like that. And you can close it too. Okay, so now let's do the flowers. The flowers I'm also going to use foam dots on. So as you can see, I put foam tape on the back of the flowers and we're going to apply the leaves first and we're going to use the Queen and Company Sheer Glue again because the sheer glue is a little bit thicker than the art glitter glue. Okay, make sure you know where your bottom is. And then we're gonna just lay it down and it will smush in with the, the thread and hold better that way. So, whoop, way too much, George, way, way too much. You don't wanna use that much glue like I just did. So we can rub some off and lay our leaves down where we think we're going to want them. Keep in mind always where the bottom of your card is. Remember, oh, I'm doing that off camera, aren't I? And remember this glue comes out really, really quickly. so. You want to be careful and not do what I did and have it spooge out on you. There. There we go. So we're even going to use the sheer glue on top of the foam tape because the foam tape won't stick very well to the thread. But with this glue on it, it will give it the little bit of oomph it needs. So we're going to start, oh, I don't know, like right here. I'm going to put some on the back here. And I think I might bring this one down here. And then I have three yellow. Whoop stuck to my finger, and one pink. So I think I'm going to do the yellow first. And then we can do the yellow like this. Here. And another yellow. And then I think a pink down. Oh, maybe yellow. Let's see how yellow looks. Whoop. You know what? That's that didn't have enough glue on it. There we go. Now it'll stay. Um, pink one. Hmm. I think I like the pink one better there. So let's do the pink one. A little bit of glue on him or her, whichever the flower is. I'm going to stick it down, get my finger under there so I can press it down. There. So I don't know if I'm going to use this one or not. Hmm. There or up here. No, I think I like it just like that. So there. Now when we lift it up, like that, that's how it'll stand on the table. And last but not least, we need our greeting. So I have transfer tape on the glitter vinyl already. And now we have the backing off of 
the glitter vinyl and we have it onto some transfer tape and we're going to put it on the backing that I designed for the greeting on the card. Hopefully we'll get this lined up perfectly. There we go. <laughs> and it's stuck to the table. So we're going to put it down. And then we're going to slowly, oh, slowly, yep. I'm going to use the scissors again. Slowly peel it back. And I have to do it slowly because of the vellum. You don't want to rip it. And I'm using the needle to help hold the vellum and the vinyl down. There we go. So I'm just going to set this to the side. And I cut part of the Y out of the vellum and didn't weed it. But there, there's our salutation. I think when I open the card, so if that's the bottom, I think I'm going to put it like right here. So to do that, I'm still going to use the Queen and Company sheer glue to get it to stick, but remember, it comes out kind of goopy and quick, so you want to take your time so you don't get lots of goop, because you don't want it to overly wrinkle or anything, the, the vellum. It's a very wet glue. So I'm just going to lift it up and lay it down. Smoosh it some. Yep, there we go. Happy Mother's Day. So there's your card, and we're done. And actually, what you can do with this, if you wanted to, we're going to flip this over, and we can put this, just a little dab of the, the glue, and we can put this inside the card if we wanted to. Oop, didn't stick. There we go. There. We should be good to go. Happy Mother's Day. So that seemed pretty easy. It's a lot of work, but it's not that complicated. Really? Once you start doing it, Ken, it doesn't seem like a lot of work, and time just flies by. I find it very relaxing. Yeah, once you get it started, it's just going on to the next in the line, right? The holes. Yeah, next hole. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So how can everybody get their hands on these files to do it themselves? It's really easy, Ken, on our website and in the description below if you're on YouTube. There's a link for the public release. We give away files to everyone. So with the public release, you get the needlework, the base card, and the backing to put your salutation on. And then for patrons at the Patron Plus level, you get all that, plus you get a red rose flower, a leaf, the banner that you could put the date on like I did for the year for the card, and the Happy Mother's Day salutation itself for the card. And the background for it. And the background for it. If you're a Patron Prime member on Patreon.com, you get everything that the Patron Plus gets. Plus, you get the roses in all different colors. Plus, you get three different leaf types. Very cool. So you can really mix it up and make it your own. 
you could use this type of card for anything in the different colored flowers let you choose different themes too plus so, you can match it to your paper and the yep thread and everything yep and we really like the aunt lydia's crochet thread because like you get those little rolls of like Butcher's twine, baker's twine, baker's twine, and things like yeah. that. Get don't get baker's twine anymore. Get Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. I think this is number ten or number three. We'll have to look. What do you mean? The, the thickness? thickness. I think it's either a ten or a three. I want to say it's a ten, but I'm not positive. But this is just as thick as baker's twine. Comes in a, a ton of colors. This whole thing, like two ninety six. It's huge. So don't use Baker's twang. Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. George, you forgot. The Lord, Patreon levels also include the guide. Oh yeah, the guide they talk about in the video. That is an easy starter for where you start and where you finish. And you skip 32 holes in between. I can't remember if you skip 32 and go into the 33rd, or if you skip 31 and you go into the 32nd. But, I have to double check. But the guide lines up to tell you exactly where to go so you don't have to count. Right. Because I counted it first. And I don't like to count. Probably with future videos, we'll be offering different size guides so you can get different effects. Yep. This is the first in the series. Next month, mm, next month, graduation? <gasps> graduation. We could do a graduation card, wreath Oops. card. Yeah. Or a birthday wreath card. Mm. I have to design it. Or for summer, you could do like a beach ball. Instead of it being a wreath wreath, it could be like a beach ball, a beach ball. with like Good rainbow idea. twine, like a beach ball. Like a beach ball. It's very good, Ken. The beach ball could look like a beach ball. The beach ball could look like a beach ball. <laughs> so we're excited to be back. Yeah, it's been fun making videos again, getting everything set up and working. So. Keep an eye out because every week we should have a video and we'll be doing lots of lives and hangouts throughout the week. So we're going to stick with Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday. It's a thing that we do. I can't remember. Somebody really smart came up with it. I think it was me. No. It wasn't? No. It was you. Yeah. So somebody really smart. Mm. Not as handsome, though. Mm. So... Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. We missed you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So we're excited to be, were you not looking? I was staring at the camera. Okay, stare at the camera.